Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and welcome to the special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV, and Happy New Year. The second satellite in the Sentinel 2 mission, called Sentinel 2B, has been undergoing tests at ESA's site in the Netherlands since June. The satellite is now packed up, and later this week it will be shipped to French Guiana to its launch site, and in March it will join its sister satellite, Sentinel-2A, in orbit. Before the satellite was packed up, I got a chance to speak to some of the key players in the Sentinel-2 mission. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and in this special edition of Earth from Space, we are in the clean room at Aztec, and behind me is the Sentinel 2B satellite. And I'm joined today by Francois Spoto, who is the Sentinel 2 project manager, and Bianca Hirsch, who is the Sentinel 2 mission manager. Now, I want to begin by asking what's the difference between a project manager and a mission manager, Francois? Hello. In our case, a mission manager is a female and the project manager is a male. But joke apart, the project manager carries all the tasks to produce the spacecraft and bring it in a status where it is uh, perfectly tested and ready for launch and following a successful in-orbit commissioning by where all functions and uh, critical requirements are being uh, checked, uh, the mission manager takes over to basically operate the system over a much longer period of time. Something you'd like to add? Yes, so in the, in the operational period when Sentinel-2B, following Sentinel-2A will be operational, basically the role of the mission manager is to foresee that the spacecraft is operating well. We do that together with the teams working in ESOC and that it's producing data, data at a very good quality and that we do together with the colleagues, with the ground segment people uh, that are working in ESRIN. Now behind us we see the satellite. What exactly are we looking at? So we are looking at the second flight model of the Sentinel-2 uh, spacecraft. It will be launched in March uh, 2017 uh, from the Space uh, Center in uh, Kourou, French Guiana. So you see here basically the second machine that will join the first one, which is in operation since June 2015. And both satellites together, operating in tandem on the same orbital plane, uh, will give improved feature, improved performance for the users. I give you one example, which is a revisit capability that will fall down from 10 days with a single satellite to five days with uh, the two uh, spacecraft in orbit. Now the main instrument is the multispectral instrument, and if I'm not mistaken, it's there on the top covered in plastic, it looks like plastic wrap. Yeah. How does the multispectral instrument work? So the multispectral instrument is a camera, a sophisticated one, of course, uh, where probably 20, 25 uh, European industries have invested uh, their best capabilities and technologies to make it uh, uh, delivered. Uh, this instrument is basically capable to visualize certain different color nuances. Those are the called spectral channels. And spectral channels to have good uh, radiometric and geometric quality needs to have perfect detectors, perfect filters, perfect alignment. Uh, some detectors in this uh, 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 optical system needs to be cooled uh, to 190K in order to operate with a reasonable level of noise. Those are the shortwave infrared detectors when the visible and near infrared detectors can operate basically at a temperature which is close to what we would call an ambient temperature on the ground. All the 13 channels together combined with a 10 meter resolution and with a 300 kilometers worth put together a machine that, that is currently unprecedented. Those capabilities are even further uh, than the one which are offered by the Landsat 8 spacecraft, which was, I think, uh, delivered in orbit in 2012. Now, once the satellite is in orbit and the multispectral instrument is collecting data, what happens next? The data is uh, recorded on the recorder on board and then the data is played back to the ground. We are currently doing this via X-band uh, data downlink to three stations that are sitting in Norway, in Italy and in Spain. Then the data are being processed on ground and then they are disseminated. So all the data are put online via a fast registration. Anybody can access the data. You do that in a couple of minutes and then you download whatever you need. So everywhere where we acquire on the globe the data are available freely and openly. And what can we do with this data? There's a whole variety of applications that can be done with the data that is ranging from uh, agriculture, monitoring agricultural yield forecast to looking at uh, deforestation, looking at inland waters and their quality, at lakes, at coastal waters, looking at coral reefs. We also monitor um, ice regions, for example, sea ice, or we can see the movement of glaciers very fast. And this is where Sentinel-2B will bring us additional revisit and additional information. Bianca and Francois, thank you so much for joining us today. 
And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about space or about our planet, you can visit our website at www.isa.int.